Hey, what's up? How's it going? It's Rob, and welcome to Leave Curious. I'm going to share with you three rewarding success stories from our little island here in the UK. Let's get started with some forest restoration. Now, I know what you're thinking, Rob. That's not the forest, that's the sea. Well, actually, just off the Sussex coast, under the water, there were once vast kelp forests. So kelp is a large brown seaweed that typically grows in shallow salt water in coastal areas. And just like our forests on land, kelp forests are rich with life, providing food, shelter, and nursery areas. Kelp is also highly productive. It logs away a lot of carbon, and when it's thriving, it helps facilitate sustainable fishing practices and ecotourism. And sadly, globally, kelp is declining four times faster than Earth's tropical rainforests. And you see, the kelp forests off the coast of Sussex, they've been largely declining because of bottom trawling, a tremendously destructive form of fishing that involves dragging heavy-weighted nets along the sea floor. And since the 1980s, only 4% of the original kelp forests of Sussex remain. They are degraded, they are fragmented, and they need our help. And thankfully we have the Sussex Kelp Restoration Project. Now this is being led by several partner specialists and organisations. And the aim? Well, it's ultimately to bring back and increase the 96% of kelp forests that have been lost over the past 40 years. But crucially, a bylaw was passed in 2021 to stop the damaging bottom trawling in a 300 kilometer square area. This is so huge because limiting this destructive process will ensure that the baby kelplets can grow again. But in the meantime, the project is busy gathering and establishing baseline data. Video surveys, genetic analysis, and core samples are being taken to best understand the current conditions, answering questions like, is kelp naturally regenerating? And where is it coming from? And the fragments of healthy kelp in Sussex which are still left, well, this just gives us hope of what this ecosystem could look like in the future. For our next project, we take a look at two young lads that are doing amazing work for not only the UK, but also European reptiles and amphibians. You see, in the UK, sadly, these little guys have been overlooked, more so than some of our other wildlife. And today, research undertaken by the ARC found that four of the 13 species that we have left are at risk of extinction. As individuals, our reptiles and our amphibians are beautiful in kind of a scaly, slimy, unconventional way. And their unique characteristics and behaviors need to be protected and cherished. But as part of our ecosystems, they play an important role in the food chain. And their presence and abundance are indicators of the overall health of an ecosystem. Their habitats, especially ponds, work to reduce flood risks, absorbing and storing carbon, and overall improving air quality. And because of their charm, there are many enthusiasts that work to study to ensure the future of these animals. A future that has been and continues to be threatened in the UK by agricultural intensification, habitat loss, and fragmentation. However, tremendous work is being done by two young Staffordshire lads, Harvey and Tom, who have designed and built the largest breeding facility of European reptiles and amphibians in the UK. And they're known as Celtic Reptile and Amphibian, a facility which has been built completely from scratch to meet the needs and requirements of the 16 different species of reptile and amphibians. The pair have gained recognition for their ingenuity, knowledge, and enthusiasm to ensure the safekeeping and breeding of these species, while hosting photography workshops and ensuring strong genetic viability of some of Europe's rarest herbs. And for our next project, we dive into the world of Ratty, the water vole, whose life in reality is far from the idyllic stories of the wind and the willows. Water voles were once found throughout the UK upon the banks of rivers, streams, and ditches. But currently in the UK, they are the fastest declining mammal species, being lost from a whopping 94% of places that they were once found. And as well as being tremendously cute and iconic, water voles are little ecosystem engineers, creating microhabitats for other species with their burrow systems in the size of riverbanks, which can extend up to three or four feet. And a long and ongoing threat to water voles has been habitat destruction. But pressures have been exacerbated by the American mink, who predates water voles and a single female can wipe out a local population in no time at all. And water vole populations have become so scarce now that they need our help. The Derek Gow Consultancy specializes in water vole conservation, conducting surveys, breeding, reintroduction, and mitigation. Work in the field often includes translocating threatened water voles to areas of better habitat and controlling and trapping mink to ensure long-term survival. Captive breeding programs have been so important and numerous sites across the UK, including Cornwall, London, and Staffordshire, have all seen reintroduced water voles to name only a few places. And thanks to the hard work of these projects, water voles across the UK now again have a future, but that 
future is only dependent upon the hard work and dedication of these organizations and people. So be sure to head down in the description of the video to find out how you can get involved. Check out the video that's on the screen now and be sure to check out our Patreon to gain access to even more content. Thanks for watching, leave curious.